Ladies and gentlemen of the internet, in this field of cybersecurity, there are a few things you can do to garner clout, right? Or some sort of recognition in an effort to, you know, make yourself look better or appear more knowledgeable. But the point is, there are things you can do to gain clout. One of them includes CVE hunting. Right. I mean, obviously, there's things like giving talks at one of the cooler black hats or DEF CON or making like 100K in bounties in like a month or a year, that sort of stuff. It will set you apart from most other hackers. But CVE hunting, anyone can do. Right. You don't have to be the creme de la creme. You don't have to be at the top of the food chain to find a CVE because, quite frankly, no one is gonna look at the publication for your CVE. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Yo, if you haven't already, check out the newsletter, navigatingsecurity.net. New issue every Friday about stuff I'm bumping into as I'm studying throughout the week. Check it out if you'd like something a bit more consistent than the YouTube videos. No one is gonna look at the publication for your CVE, unless you're someone like me who actually wants to know what happened, right? People just see you post 10 CVE numbers. They don't even care what they were. They could be some bump excesses, vulnerabilities, like the weakest web application that no one uses, but might still be maintained, right? So no one actually cares, but this will give you credibility if you can list 10 times or 15 times CVEs in like your LinkedIn bio or on your resume, right? Of course, there's some people, like I said, like me, that'll ask you or that'll go look up the publication and be like, what was the CVE? What happened? They want to know what it took for you to find it. If there is any such information, if there is a POC that you created or someone else created, right? Stuff like that. But for the most part, people will not care to go and look up what the actual CVE was. They just want to know whether you have a CVE or not. I personally don't have any CVEs yet because right now my time is dedicated more towards bug bounty. I want to get good at that. And if I do get awarded a CVE on a program, cool. If not, doesn't matter. I shall focus on this at some point, but you guys might not be doing bug bounty. So I want to give you some nuggets based off an article I read from someone I follow on LinkedIn. His name is Florian walter right penetration tester and he says that the best way to do cve hunting at the moment is github dorking if you don't know what that means it's kind of like google dorking but in github and you're specifically looking for patterns of code you can either search for a specific string or you can use regular expressions in your searching so in this article i'll link it in the description florian goes into detail about his process and how he has already found a bunch of CVEs, right? Using this method. And so, uh, in the introduction, he says, before starting this journey, I'd already found one CVE, a stored XSX vulnerability in Apache Spark around last year, July. And then he decided to, you know, dedicate some time to look for more CVEs. And this method, he says it can scale pretty quickly. But obviously, if you read this and you just try use his methodology verbatim, you're not going to find anything, right? Because obviously he has covered all these um, regular expressions and commands, etc. So you're going to have to build your own. And he gives a couple of examples of coming up with proper GitHub dorks. And he says, at this point, I started thinking about some good search terms and used ChatGPT to help me formulate regular expressions for GitHub dorks. Some examples, these are the examples he gives. And then he goes into detail using proof of concepts, right? Some of the things he found using some of the GitHub dorks he formulated. So if you just come on this and you read and you try copy and paste these, that's not gonna help you. It's not gonna work for you. He's already done this. He's already sifted through everything he could probably find with these. So what you need to do is come up with your own and apply the same methodology, just like everything else. You can't really copy and paste forever and not expect to be a script kitty, right? Script kitties. We don't want to be script kitties anymore. Build your own methodology, apply the formulations and all that jazz. And maybe you'll find some CVEs of your own. I think the biggest thing would obviously be finding targets if you're going to do this in open source applications 
I mean, you could just search the entirety of GitHub, but I don't think that's the smart approach, but that is the approach he used in this scenario. He searched the entirety of GitHub and then he'd sift through the results. And obviously he said it was able to scale, but another way you could do this is going on Docker Hub, right? Finding projects you're interested in and then using these um, regular expressions to sift through the code. That works too. You might try that, you might not. But my point is hunt for CVEs, slap that on your resume, post it on your LinkedIn. Most people aren't going to actually look at what it was, right? You could become famous of a really big CVE, right? That everyone talks about ETC. But at the same time, that's not the case for most people, right? So go read this, go give this a read, right? I'll also link the mayor's post on CVE hunting in the description so that you get a bit more context and a bit more ways to try do this. And let me know what you think in the comments, right? Are you doing CVE hunting? Are you working on Bug Bunny? What are you focused on? I'm focused on Bug Bunny for the next two months. I'm doing this 12 week year thing. So after that, we move on to something else. But clout. Don't be a cloud goblin though. I don't even know if that's a thing in cyber security. Anyways, I'm done ranting. Do some CVE hunting. I hope this helps. Cheers. Check out the newsletter, by the way.